Now, I remember when I was about 15 years of old age, you know, we started to smoke, you know? And uh, we didn't have very, very much money. But anyway, my parents didn't know I smoked. And my brother Bill took advantage of this. He used to go into my pocket and steal my cigarettes, knowing that I couldn't say a word. <laughs> Anyway, that went on for a, a week or two and I got fed up. Nah. I marched through to the living room one day in front of my mother and father with a cigarette in my mouth. And that was his blackmail finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, they were situations of concern about his daughter, making sure that his daughter was treated right and fair. And, um,. That I was going to toe the line and make sure I became part of the family. So did you feel part of the family? Well, I went to all the parties. <laughs> <laughs> dad was always there. He loved to have his picture taken and act the ham a little bit. But since my dad isn't here, I'll say a few words. Um, coming to America, I was 17, and really my dad was in a rain very much when we were growing up. First of all, there was the war. And then, of course, being a chef, he worked strange hours. And I found that I've done a lot more with my dad in my later years and his later years since he's been retired. Um, but in the last 10 years, he'd come and visit us when we were overseas. Um, and every place we've lived, he and my mother have come to visit. And we've done a lot of pretty special things together. We've traveled, we've toured, and I've shown him things that he probably wouldn't have seen otherwise, and he's done the same for me. Um, he's been very close to my daughters.
Okay, I can go back. Uh, uh, my brother William, who passed away yesterday, the 17th, was four and a half years older than me. And uh, he pushed me around a little bit, you know, until I got a little bit older. I could stand up to him. Anyway, we were more than brothers. We were friends. And we spent most of our, our life together. In 1953, my brother decided to come over to the United States. And we were always getting letters back in Scotland. Come over to the States, you'll love it, you'll love it. To be perfectly honest, uh, I had no wish personally to leave Scotland. I was pretty well situated, this and that next thing. But my wife got the bug. And you know, when a woman gets a bug, you might as well pack in. Anyway, we followed my brother over here in 1955. We came and we stayed with him for the first 10 days or so until we were able to get a place of our own. From then on, it was, again, a very, very close family. Bill and I were, I should say, are, or were, very keen fishermen. And uh, an average of two days a week we'd go out fishing. And uh, he was a character, you know. Bill couldn't cast straight. He couldn't go right forward. <laughs> I'd put my line out. And he would follow me and put his line out. And I'd go right across here, right across my line. I'd say, Bill, you're right across my line. He would look at me. Let's say, well, just drawing his line again. <laughs> uh,
Today we were Megan was here last November. In his own words, he told her what had happened when he was a young man. He won two uh, Andrew Car Carnegie Awards for bravery. And uh, one happened when he was 14. And we do have the newspaper articles, but she wanted to write it in her words so she could use it for a school project. He stopped a runaway horse outside of the school and uh, averted probably a disaster because the children were getting out of school. And then when he was, I guess the year I was born, so he hadn't been married maybe a couple of years, um, a girl set herself in fire accidentally in the kitchen in the hotel where he worked and he managed to to get the flames out and burned himself pretty badly but saved the girl's life basically and that was the kind of things he did found out later that my grandfather also won it so it must run in the family my granddad jumped into the water of Leith or New Haven Harbor my uncle Jimmy said and save someone from drowning. So there was, it must have just run in the family and, and my dad followed his dad's footsteps. Well, I met Bill back in 1967, 68, <clears throat> and that's when I was first going with his daughter, Celia. And he didn't like me because I was an Irishman but then after a while, especially after Sean was born, we got along, along very well, except at parties. <laughs> he and I always drank too much, and we always seemed to get in each other's way. <clears throat> but uh, I always enjoyed Bill, and was always grateful for the way he treated Sean all through the several years that have gone on now. And I'm sure he's had a good life. Um, I'm sure I'd be very happy that everybody remembers him for all the things he's done for them. And we'll miss him. If my brother were, were here at this moment, he would say, Jimmy, that's just me. I would rather have a little rose from the garden of a friend than half the choicest flowers where my stay on earth his end. I would rather have the kindest words and a smile that I can see than flattery where my heart is still and this life cease to be. I would rather have a loving smile from the friends I know are true than tears shed round my casket when the world I bid adieu. This was taken from the Evening Tribune on the 3rd of February 1902 and I just it was just how I felt. And I'm sure Bill, if he was here, would agree with me.